Hello, everyone. Uh, Tim Greinert, Executive Vice President and Chief Operations Officer with Junior Achievement USA, and uh, would like to thank you for joining us today for this town hall. Uh, the town hall is entitled Game Plan for the Future, Navigating Money and Jobs in this Dynamic World, co-hosted by KPMG and Junior Achievement. KPNG and Junior Achievement have partnered for years around our shared goal to empower youth to develop the tools they need to positively impact and transform their own financial futures and to be successful. Today's discussion will be around transferable skills, the types of skills learned through JA programming like Finance Park, Finance Park Advanced, and JA programs in the classroom, which help build the foundation for students like you to start off on a strong financial footing as you plan your future and navigate your own unique career path in a very dynamic professional world. I'm pleased to introduce our moderator for today's discussion, Olympic medalist and KPMG Learning Ambassador, Lori Hernandez. Lori is joined by three KPMG professionals who will share with us their insights and experiences from their very own unique career paths. So without further ado, I now hand it off to uh, Lori Hernandez to start our discussion. Lori? Thanks, Tim. I am so happy to be here today and having this conversation with all of you. Many of you might not know this, but I have already had quite a dynamic and definitely nonlinear career path that has been shaped largely by my own passions and skill sets. Between going to the Olympics for gymnastics, being a New York Times bestseller, and even going to NYU as a drama major, those things have shaped a big piece of who I am. But also being a KPMG learning ambassador, not just for literacy, but also with the importance of financial literacy, things like budgeting, being able to make sure that I have enough money to have my own apartment or to be able to go to school or applying for your first credit card. All of those things are extremely important. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. But Enough about me. I really want to spend some time allowing our panelists to share their stories since they each have quite dynamic career journeys of their own. So Amy, would you like to start? My name is Amy Brendan. I'm a former registered nurse, uh, which was a very fulfilling career. And then I decided to change careers and go into audit. And now I'm a KPMG a senior associate where I my, the practice is audit and I usually engage with clients you know, looking over financial statements, income statements, as well as help the first years and second years within the company, you know, coaching, building their skills and helping them develop. And so even though it's been a journey, I do not regret any changes in career changes I've made. It's, it's been it's been wonderful and I'm glad to have to be here. Thank you for sharing, Amy. Nick, why don't you share a little of your career journey and how you ended up at KPMG? Thank you, Lori. Really uh, excited to be here with you. Um, I am in my 13th year now actually with KPMG, which is kind of hard to imagine. Um, I'm a managing director in our tax practice. Um, I've been in one actual um, group within KPMG the entire time I've been here, but I've actually had a lot of different opportunities to try a lot of different um, types of work and had a lot of good experiences doing lots of different um, roles besides just serving my clients. So I've been able to do rotations to India and to Italy for three months each. I've been able to be a national instructor um, for tax business school within KPMG, been able to be a mentor to a lot of our young professionals. So I had a lot of really great opportunities to try a lot of different things. Um, and even though I've been in the same group the entire time, it's been a, a great experience and I've gotten to try a lot of different things uh, within KPMG. Wonderful, thank you so much. And lastly is Mula Hilton. Hi, Lori. It's so great to meet you. Kind of crazy to think I've been watching on TV and here we are on first name basis. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> excited to be here talking with all of you alongside my amazing colleagues, Amy and Nick. My name is Mulata Work Hilton, but I go by Mulat. I'm currently a senior associate within our talent and acquisition group, specifically working in our diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, team. But my job with the firm actually started when I was a sophomore in college. I did a pre-internship program within our tax practice then returned in my junior year as an audit intern, then started full time with the firm as an audit associate. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, huh, audit, didn't you just say you're in talent acquisition? And you definitely heard that right. I actually started my full time journey with the firm in the audit practice and was there for five years before I did a 180 and switched over to talent and acquisition. 
but we'll be able to dive into more of that when we get into our discussion. I'm just very grateful to be able to work at a company who's willing to take a chance and invest in me and support my career and my life goals. So I'm very excited to be here and I look forward to our conversation. Thank you for sharing with a lot. I can't wait to hear what all of you have to say next. And as you all can see, we have quite an array of experiences on this panel. And I think we'd all agree that our journeys are far from complete. I say that because research shows that younger generations are starting to think about their careers differently, or differently, planning for longer working years with varied paths along the way compared to generations before us, with changing technology and innovation creating new opportunities all the time. Many employees may move sideways or even down at times as they traverse different jobs and multiple careers, like climbing a jungle gym rather than a traditional corporate ladder. Panelists, I wonder if you can share how your journey has resembled a jungle gym and how your career aspirations have changed since you were in high school, like many of the students that are joining us today. I could take that one. Um, so I mentioned in my introduction that I had a career shift after being in the practice for about five years. But if we even go back to my high school days, I think you'll be surprised to know that I graduated high school with the hopes of becoming an astronomer. <laughs> I took physics and astronomy classes, and I even did a summer internship at NASA, where I had planned a mission to Mars, and I even met a real-life astronomer who'd been up in space. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I want to do this. So I went to Christopher Newport University with the intentions of graduating with an applied uh, physics degree. <laughs> it took me the first semester to realize that that was not it. <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but at the time I was really struggling, you know, to give you a little bit more background about me. I'm a first generation immigrant. My, um, I was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And when I was born, my parents immigrated to the United States. So they left their five children, they left their friends and their families and everything that they do to travel to a foreign country for us to have a better education and essentially a better life. I'm over here anxious thinking about having to pack for an extended weekend. And here they are, you know, giving up their entire sense of security for me. Um, you know, that kind of sacrifice, especially when you, you see them struggling to adjust to the environment and the language as a kid, it makes you want to be able to repay it, even though, you know, for a fact, you'll never be able to match it. Um, it also puts a lot of pressure on you. You know, I was the youngest of the five of the children and the first to attend the university. So for me, it really felt like I was my parents' only shot. You know, I couldn't fail. You know, I wanted to succeed because to me, it meant that my parents were also going to succeed. It, it was really hard. Long story short, it was very hard. And, and looking back, I realized it really did need to play out the way that I did, that it did. You know, I started thinking, I'm like essentially resetting my life. I was 17 years old when I decided that I was going to be an astrophysicist and I was going to take on the world. And it felt like the whole world was kind of crumbling before my eyes. And I felt completely defeated. I felt like a failure that I let my parents down and it was hard. And looking back, I, I realized it did need to play out the way that it did. There was a, a lot of lessons that I think I needed to learn at the time, um, who I am as an individual separate from the identity that I was attaching to my parents. And the reason that I share with you all this is because I think it's really important for you to realize and also accept that what you want right now is not going to be what you want a few years down the road. As things are going to be, there's going to be changes. Things are subject to change. And sometimes those changes are completely out of your control. So the best advice that I can give you is really to work on figuring out who you are and who you want to be. And that's not a question that you should ask yourself only once in your lifetime. You know, when I realized that physics wasn't the route that I wanted to take, I let myself out my, have my sappy moments, you know, like mourn this loss, I guess. But I needed to figure out what was next. So I started to really reflect on my skill sets. I started reaching out to my peers and my mentors and really talking to them about what I was experiencing. And that led me to the business school and then, you know, to accounting and then KPMG. And now here I am sharing my experiences with all of you and I couldn't be happier. I mean, sure, I'm not one of the astronomers heading off into space next year, <laughs> but I do work for one of the best companies according to Fortune Magazine. So a win is a win. <laughs> what an incredible life lesson. I mean, to constantly ask yourself, who am I and what do I want throughout your life? That is something that we can all take with us. So thank you for sharing that. Would anybody else like to share? I can go next. Um, I think I like to think about my career as a series of chapters. And so I think that's that's the way that I've been working at KPMG is just looking at um, what what do I what goals do I have for a couple of years from now? Um, and then really just looking at just a couple of years ahead and definitely having long term goals in mind. But I think for for all the young folks on the phone, I think it's kind of daunting to think about working at the same career or at the same job for 
for your whole life. And that's something that maybe people in past generations have done was working at the same career for a long time. I definitely never thought that I would still be at KPMG uh, 13 years later, but if you kind of break it up and put some short-term goals together, um, you can really like have different uh, short-term um, accomplishments, different short-term experiences. And then when you see other experiences that are available or different um, opportunities, you can raise your hand uh, and then really put yourself in a position to learn new things and really develop um, as a person and as a professional. Um, you can be anything that you uh, wanna be. And I think you don't, I agree completely, Malat, you might not even know that, you know, what path you're going to be on even exists where you're sitting right now. Um, so I, I think the jungle gym analogy is a great one. I kind of think about it like chapters and, you know, for me, it was going to India was the first kind of goal that I was going for. And then I kind of switched on to some new projects, became an instructor, that sort of thing. And so really raising your hand for different opportunities, um, can keep life interesting, keep you motivated, keep you with new challenges. And so I think that's definitely something that, that I would recommend for all of you is to raise your hand when opportunities present themselves um, and take advantage of them. Absolutely. Thank you for that understanding. We don't have to have the same careers as our parents, unless that's what you want to do too. The world is your oyster. You have so many options, options and choices. So don't close anything out for yourself. I believe we have one more jungle gym story. Yes, one more. So when I think about a jungle gym, I think about maybe rock climbing or the ladder or the slide or the tunnel with the slide. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? When I, if you if you were a kid and you first go to the to a park and you see a jungle gym, most kids probably won't try that rock climbing first. Maybe they say, oh my gosh, there's a slide. That's the fun part. But in my journey and in, in going to from high school to my my first you know career choice was nursing. And I would consider that to be the rock climbing. I thought that was very challenging, very hard, but even still, I was like, hey, I, I can do it. I had to motivate myself going through nursing school. It was so hard. And so when I got finished with nursing in school, I feel like now it's time to ride the slide. It was time to enjoy my ride, you know, you know, be passionate about what I do every single day, providing care for patients. But then, you know what, after the slide, I guess I went back up on that rock climbing again, because then I decided to go back to college again and get a degree in accounting and, and finance. I don't know why I keep on going on this rock climbing. I thought maybe I would be enjoying a lot of the other things through nursing, but hey, that's the journey of life. So went back up that climbing, the rock climbing again, and now I'm on my journey again, going down that slide, having a great time here at KPMG. So if you look at your career or your life about what do I want to do, challenge yourself. Don't say, I just want to get on the slide. Think about doing something different. If, if you come across something that is, seems challenging, motivate yourself. Look to mentors. Look to others and, and encourage yourself. Sometimes it, it, does, it does get a little hard, but I feel like when the, a jungle gym analogy came up, as soon as I thought about it, I was like, the time you go through college, the time the work you put into training, it's, sometimes it can be hard and challenging, but you know what? It's, it's so many things that you can do at a, at a, on a jungle gym. So Look at it is as if you have a lot of opportunities, a lot of goals and aspirations. Go for it. Don't think that anything is too hard for you to do. And how have my aspirations changed since high school? Probably at first I thought, you know, where I'm from, I'm, come, I'm originally from Mississippi. So in the medical field, that was really the only career you really could get into where you could make a, a decent amount of money when you first graduate. So First, my aspiration was like, oh, I'm going to be a nurse for the rest of my life. Everybody in my family is almost probably 50% of the, the females mainly are in the nursing field, like from doctors to nurse practitioners, respiratory therapists. So I just thought, hands down, I was going to be a nurse for the rest of my life. But you know what? Things change and, and I'm, I'm aspiring to be something else. I, I'm, I'm probably going to go in that jungle gym and try to get my MBA at some point. So I encourage everyone, don't ever stop going to that rock climbing, no matter how hard it gets. Because you know what? Every time you do that rock climbing, you gain a little skill of how to get up on, on the top even faster and quicker you did the first time around. So I just encourage you, everybody, you can do it. Challenge yourself all the way through life. Just as you just mentioned, every time you climb up that rock climbing wall, you get stronger and stronger. You get to take on new courses. So I fully back this up. 
thank you all for sharing your jungle gym stories. JA Finance Park and Finance, Finance Park Advanced, two JA programs geared towards middle and high school students, focus on helping students understand personal financial planning and career exploration. Students who complete these programs learn a number of skills, including being able to identify personal skills, value and career interests, evaluate risks and benefits of saving and investing, and identify components of a successful budget, to name a few. So I'll ask our panelists, thinking about how your aspirations and career paths have evolved over time, are there any skills you learned from your first job or from an experience from when you were in middle school or high school that you still find useful today? Like some of the skills JA students are gaining? I can go first for that one. Um, I think, so my, to be honest, my first job was that, so I'm, I live in Minneapolis, and so Minnesota is the home of the Mall of America, so I actually worked at the Mall of America for my first job, and it was at a peanut butter store, and I, uh, it's, it's a little bit hard to think about, but uh, I, I took two buses from high school to the Mall of America to work at this peanut butter store, and um, w one thing that I learned was that having a long commute to work is not ideal, so when I first started to work at KPMG, I lived right by public transportation, so I could just take really quick transportation into to my job. I don't have to be stressed out by driving. I, just, I can be on my phone and whatnot. And um, so, so that was part of what I where I planned to live. I actually still live in the same like couple block radius of where I started when I started working at KPMG because it's just so convenient. So really valuing my time and how much time it takes to get to work can make a really big difference um, in your day and how much time you have for yourself. The other really big thing that I think I learned was just um, <clears throat> not even learning, but just work ethic is not just something that you can turn on and off. You will not just be able in your life to just decide, okay, now I want to start to try hard. Now I want to start to work hard. Um, it's something that you kind of have to build up and, and build up as a habit and build up just like any other muscle I, to, from my perspective in your body. And so I remember Sometimes, you know, picking up a double shift, the Mall of America, opening up at like 9 a.m. and working until 9 p.m. And um, yes, I, I think that building up a work ethic, you can start that now, whether it's studying, um, you know, if you're Lori, I'm sure practicing for gymnastics, whatever it is, you can start to build your work ethic um, and you can start to build some of the habits that you're gonna, you're gonna have. Um, so it's like being organized, showing up to things on time, um, listening when people are talking to you, all that kind of stuff. Can really start to build now what kind of habits um, go into being a good professional and any of that kind of stuff can apply to whatever job or whatever career that you want to follow um, in life and so I think whatever kind of job it is right now you know it's just working at a peanut butter store you can apply and really build into your habits uh, to help you be successful in the future. For sure thank you so much Nick. I, hey I love the peanut butter store so I'm with you on that. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, when I think back to my first job, it was probably just uh, food service. I was at um, a front desk, you know, like that. I took orders for a Domino's pizza shop. <laughs> um, and I think the skills that I learned from that are the more or less people skills. My goodness, there would be just, you get so many different personalities coming through. And I think that's so important because I feel like when people consider like accounting or, you know, just the finance world, you just imagine somebody like in front of, in front of their screens, like crunching like Excel numbers or something. But the reality of it, it, that is not the case. Uh, soft skills take you as much further in life as your technical skills. And that's something that you guys need to keep in mind um, as you guys, you know, think about what next steps are looking like for you. So I would say my biggest, uh, you know, experience would be just getting those interactions with difficult people and just knowing how to navigate that, those sort of conversations. And then knowing when the appropriate time is to tap the next person in charge to say, hey, I need help and I need you to step in. So I think that's that would be what I learned. I love that. Amy, what about you? Um, my first job was at a place called Backdoor Burger. So it was fast food. I was 16 years old, started a job, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I do not want to do this job. But I want my extra money. So my parents were like, if you want extra money, go get a job. So you know what I did? I went, I went and got a job, and I started out as a cashier, and I found out very quickly that no, everybody on my team, everybody was th that was there was a part of, of a bigger picture. 
I learned one thing, teamwork is so important. And if someone saw me maybe struggling when I first started, they pitched in and say, hey, what do you need help with? And so when I became more skilled at cashier and doing the drive through which I thought was a nightmare when I first start, started. But I, I build my skills and the longer I work, the better I got at it. So when someone else would come in and I was, I became the person who trained people. I was like, oh my gosh, I was able to train people. So it's like, no matter what you do, no, what, no matter if you're a first year or I feel like in, in the company that I'm in now, you'd be a first year and it goes all the way up to a partner. I feel like no matter where you at on this, you know, your role, your career, Everybody is a part of the bigger picture, and we need everybody effort and help to make this go smoothly. And when you see someone struggling or need help, pitch in a helping hand because I guarantee you one day you're going to need someone to extend that same thing to you. So if you're in, I'm sure a lot of you guys are in class. So if you have a teammate, friend that may be struggling with a, a subject, say, hey, look, you can come study with me. Like we're all in it together. So, I mean, I know at school, you probably might not feel like you're all in together because you get a grade, but at the end of the day, you can build your skills already now where you, when you start your job, you'll have those leadership skills. Y'all, I'm Laura Hernandez and I approve this message. Absolutely. Show up for yourself, but also show up for your teammates, show up for your classmates, show up for your coworkers, show up for everybody around you because it matters. So thank you for that, Amy. Digging a little deeper into finances and financial literacy, which I think we can all agree can be complex, but very much a necessity to be successful. I would love to hear from our panelists how financial literacy has played a role in your career path and enabled you to make big decisions or career shifts. Amy, can we start with you? This is something that I had to learn. And I, had, I actually experienced when I went from nursing to deciding, when I was in nursing, I decided early on that I wanted to make a career change. So I was like, I know I want to make a career change. So how am I going to, number one, effectively do this with the least amount of quote unquote pain versus finances? You know, it's, you know, if you're going to college, because I, I was wanting to go to college full time. So I'm like, how I'm number one going to be able to pay for my college full time. I didn't want to work when I went through college and didn't have, have a budget. So what I had to do, I was like, okay, this is how much college costs. This is how much I need to have a college. This is how much my rent, my, when I want to hang out with friends, whatever I want to do, I created a budget and I was able to go back to school and not, I didn't have to work when I went back to school. So I think financial, financial literacy is so important, whether you're planning on going back to school or maybe you're deciding to purchase a car, no matter what you're doing, you always have to consider what do I want to do in the future? How much does it, does it cost? I think a lot of people say, I want to do this, but they don't do the research and find out what it really takes to get what you really want. And, and of course, you can say, oh, yeah, I want to go to college. Or I want to do this. But you have to plan. And I think that was my biggest thing that I learned from going from nursing to going back to college. It was like, man, if I hadn't a plan, save my money, budgeted, and just in quote, quote unquote, wild out because I feel like, oh, I'm young. I don't have to worry about money or I don't have to worry about this. You always have to worry about money because you never know what can happen at any point in time in life. So that has played a big, big factor in my career path of making sure even now I'm always thinking, I don't know if I go back and get my MBA, I want to make sure I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but you always be prepared. Always say, prepare for the worst. And you, if I decide I want to go back and get my MBA, I'm making plans now in case that, that door opens for me to where I can get my MBA. So definitely plan, budget, and do your research on things you want to do and see if it's even a thing you can do. That is such an important perspective. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mulat, I'd love to hear your, your perspective next. Uh, when I first like left at the very beginning of high school, I wouldn't say I was the most like fruit, you know fruitful of, of my money. I I had a tendency to you know just see what I wanted and I'll just like go ahead and buy it. But as I actually started getting into my whole college experience, um, and I paid my way through school, so I like had to take out the loans and all that stuff. Um, it was really important for me to try to build my credit and all that good stuff and get it ready for the time that I graduated. And I'm really glad that I did because I was able to buy my first house after graduation. And that's not something that most people can say. Um, so being mindful of that. And even now you know, with my husband, I'm like me being the accountant, I'm the person that kind of like manages our books. And I'm one of those that's like a real stickler. I want to think about five years down the road, where are we going to be, you know? So 
going through that experience now, seeing my parents struggle uh, when I was younger and then actually being to have my own independence with my own money when I was in college, that was what I needed to kind of like get myself together. And now I would say I'm definitely more cognizant about every single penny that I spend. I try to think about the long-term things that I buy is of quality because, you know, sometimes you buy things and you end up buying it over and over because you didn't bought the cheaper thing instead of the one that has the most quality. So I would say like financial literacy, sometimes it's something that you'll need to learn what works for you. We can sit here and give you all the tips in the world about budgeting, but you need to figure out like what actually works for you. Like what is the system that makes more sense for you? And that might take a little bit of time to get there, but just the fact that you're in this organization and you're having these conversations now speaks a whole bunch of volumes. Like I, I was not involved in JA back in the day. And I feel like if I were, maybe I would have been a little bit more aware about some of the things that I was going to get myself into. Um, so just being cognizant of all that and really figuring out uh, the kind of lifestyle that you wish to live, not only in this moment, but like five to 10 years down the road, that really is important and will help you work backwards to figure out what kind of career do I need to pursue in order to get the goal that I want and so on and so forth. Well, and I fully resonate with your experience. I mean, I used to be someone who would just see something, point to it and be like, I would like this and come home with it. And as soon as I applied and got into college, that fully changed. I got a nice little wake up call. <laughs> Make sure that you are aware of what you're spending or aware of your own finances. I think that's a really important perspective to share. So thank you for that. Nick, what about you? So first of all, congratulations a lot on buying a house right away. That's really, that's awesome that you were able to do that. <clears throat> um, I'll just go quickly and just say, I think when I was in, in college and I, I was going to have to take out a loan, one big thing that I don't even know why they offered me both, you know, a couple different kinds of loans and one of the kinds of loans didn't even start accruing interest. It was called a Stafford loan and it didn't start accruing interest until I graduated college. And so I was glad that I read the details and, and picked that loan, but there's some small choices sometimes where you kind of have to look in the details of what, what actually is happening in your finances that can make a really big difference. And so just not having interest start accrue till you graduate. If you kind of think about some of those kinds of things, that's really important. And just thinking about those kinds of details in general, I think in life is really helpful. I know we've talked a lot about budgeting. Um, I, I really tried to focus when I first started at KPMG of just what are some of like the big costs that everybody has? And so housing is probably the biggest one. And so just trying to make sure that I was really conscious of how much money I was paying for rent. And I lived in the same like place with two of my high school friends for like the first eight years that I worked at KPMG. And so even though I was making more money and I was getting raises and I was getting promoted, I kind of kept a similar standard of living and I didn't just spend that money. And so I was saving money for a down payment for a house. And so I think really not going too crazy when just because you make a little bit more money doesn't mean that you have to start to like really ratchet up your lifestyle just because you make a little bit more money. And so I think um, kind of getting to a lifestyle that you feel good about and you feel comfortable with. And then as you start to kind of advance in your career, maybe not going too far uh, just because you make a little bit more money, um, I think will really help you um, in the future and really put yourself in a good position to be financially stable. I think the other big thing is just really thinking about what do you wanna prioritize? And like, what do you want the most out of life? And so for me, um, you know, ever since I was a kid, I live in Minnesota, I really wanted to have season tickets to the Vikings. And so that's something that I have season tickets to the Vikings now, something that was really important to me. So I made sure to prioritize that. I also really like traveling. Traveling is really important to me. So I want to make sure that I have saved money to travel and, and go. I've gone a, a lot of places all over the world, and it's something that really brings me a lot of joy. Um, you know, spending a lot of money on a car wasn't one of the things. So I didn't have a car until I think I was like 31 years old. So you can you can really like think about what's important to you. Think about what do you really want and what do you really value out of life, and then make sure that you're kind of like budgeting and putting your finances towards making sure that you're getting those experiences or whatever it is that you really feel passionate about and really um, value personally. Thank you panelists for your candor and insights. I really appreciate you all being so open and sharing your journeys with us. I'd now like to take some time to open up the conversation up to our JA students and questions that they may have. Our first question is from Walton. So do you see a traditional college education as necessary in today's world, especially given the workforce skills gap currently? 
That is a really good question, Walton. I'll, I'll take that one first. So I actually talk with my, my little brother is it's like 19 years old right now, and I've been talking with him about this a lot. Um, so I would say, is it necessary? I definitely do not think that getting a four-year college degree is necessary. Um, There's so many different options out there, um, whether it's two-year, four-year, technical school, um, going, going to something in the trades. There's, there's lots of different options out there. Um, so I definitely don't think that it's necessary. Um, I, I also think that there's a lot of people that I know that have spent a lot of time getting a four-year degree. Um, one of my sisters, she, you know, she got a four-year degree and then she ended up doing a boot camp, um, like a coding boot camp. And so now she kind of does something that's very different than what she even went to school for in the first place. So I definitely don't think it's necessary. I do think that it's, um, I, I never want to hear people say that they've just completely written any of these options off because I think it's just really important for all of you all to just kind of think about what all your options are, learn about what different opportunities are for you. Um, I think there's probably some adults in, in your life um, that you could ask questions about, like, what do you do? What, what's your job like? Do you have to work a lot? Do you not work a lot? Do you, do you like the people that you work with? Do you have opportunities for advancement in your career? And so I think really being curious about some of the people that, that are around you in life um, is a great way to learn about all these different things. I've been like trying to encourage my brother, like just reach out to, to our cousin, right? Ask him about what his job is like. It's, it's like not a normal thing for him to just reach out to, to our cousin. It's kind of a lot older than him, but just ask, just start the conversation. Most people are gonna be um, happy to share about what their career path is like with you. Um, and so I think learning about what all your different options are and then, you know, I'm sure a four-year career path is not for everybody. It's expensive or it can be really expensive, but I think also understanding what the options are and then pursuing what opportunities are there. If, you know, even if money is a, is a deterrent to, to doing that, are there scholarships that are available? Um, or thinking about what are the options after getting that degree that I might wanna pursue? What kind of financial um, position would I be in if I do get that job? Um, where maybe the loans are worth it you know, if you have to take out loans. Um, so it kind of just depends on what career path you're going to be on. But I think it all comes down to just really being curious um, about what the different options are. So you could kind of have awareness about what all the different paths are that you could take. And then thinking about how that kind of aligns with what you want to do, what financial position that you're in, um, and, and ultimately, what do you want to pursue? Like what what's going to make you happy? What do you want to get out of life? Um, you know, I wanted Vikings season tickets. That was a big thing to me. And so making sure that I was going to be in a place where I could do that was something that I kind of focused on. But um, so just thinking about what are the, what's the kind of lifestyle that I want to be able to have and thinking about all those different pieces and, and then trying to like figure out what makes the most sense. Great, great question. And if I could just piggyback off that, um, I obviously echo everything that Nick said. I think it's very important, especially at this stage in your life, to just do research about what options are really out there. Um, and though I would agree that the, there are other ways for you to be successful without having to have a traditional college uh, education, I do want to highlight that to have a career with a firm, especially in the audit and the tax practices, uh, we do require that you have an accredited, you know, a degree from an accredited school. Um, and typically in order for you to continue to advance, you would need to pursue like your CPA license, which is the Certified Public Accountant Certification. Um, so that's not really a rule that KPMG just like made up. These are, you know, rules that companies have to abide, abide by in order to be in compliance with the law. So, and this is definitely not to say that KPMG doesn't offer opportunities for those that don't have a degree, but it is required for those specific two industries that I mentioned. But you'll, you'll find all of this out as you start asking the questions and really exploring and figure out what you want to do with your life. Um, so just make sure that when you do explore and ask, you ask these questions too, and you say, what certifications do I, you know, do I need? Like, what is the minimum requirement for me to be even, to be eligible even to apply for the position? So as long as you keep that in mind as you do your research, I think regardless of whether you go four year or whatever other thing that you do, you can still be successful. Um, I don't think it's determined solely on a four year degree. So up next, we have Tejas. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. I just had a quick question. So given the shifting employment landscape in AI and the continual big tech layoffs, has a seasoned professional with experience managing a constantly evolving workforce how do you recommend our youth go about these changes? So, I, 
I mean, I, I, I think it's a very valid question. Um, it's, it's a very uh, interesting landscape in general. You know, when I came out of school, it was 2010 and there, there was a recession and I feel like it's been kind of ever since then, it's been much more favorable for all, all the people that were out there looking for jobs. And it's been a little bit more of a, um, it's been for people who are looking for jobs, it's been easier. When I first came out of school, it was not easy. So I, I'm curious to see you know, kind of where's the economy going right now. Um, I, I think there, there's, um, there's a lot of skills and I kind of touched on this earlier, but there's a lot of skills that you can kind of build and, and think about um, that could apply to any job. And so what my, I think about my sister, my sister, she started out in social work and then she got a job um, working as like a customer service sales rep. And then within that job, she, she switched over to being in the supply chain. And from that po point, she actually moved to a different company with somebody she had met at her first job um, who really thought that she had impressed her a lot and she moved into HR. And so I think if you can kind of have good, like basic foundational skills, probably you can take some of the, the basic professional skills that you can into any industry. And so whether they apply for big tech, um, maybe, maybe that's not the case, but um, if you can be organized, if you can ask good questions and be curious, if you can be resourceful, um, you know, be able to try and figure some things out by yourself, be able to know how to like utilize your resources to, to kind of get to an answer by yourself. I think regardless of whatever industry you're in, um, you're gonna have a good kind of set of skills in your toolbox. Um, that you can apply to any job and you kind of never know who you're going to be uh, interacting with or talking with that you might be impressing, that you might be making an impression on, that might be an opportunity for you in the future. And so I think that was one really cool thing that I, I learned from my sister of like, she just worked really hard. And even though she had gotten a master's in social work, and then she kind of did a, a complete 180 in careers, she was really able to advance in her career. Um, in completely different career paths. And I think it was a lot of just like having these kind of basic, um, you know, basic hard work, work ethic, um, being able to really like listen to people, empathize with people. And so taking some of these skills that she had from all these other jobs and being able to apply them in, in different industries. Um, I think really, if you can focus on kind of being a well-rounded professional or well-rounded person, you know, whatever industry is up or down, um, in the future, stuff's always going to change, but I think you'll be able to to find value and provide value to to a company um, if you have some of those basic skills. Hopefully, that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. Our next question is from Michelle. Thank you, panelists, for being here and answering questions and giving us uh, your stories. My question to you all today is what's one piece of advice you would give to someone struggling to decide on a specific career or job because of financial factors? Like, for example, how big of a role does a salary play in deciding one career choice, especially for somebody who's going into the workforce right after college graduation? Thanks for that question, Michelle. I'll, I'll try my best to answer your question as best as I can. I switched from, like I said earlier, and from nursing to uh, accounting. Well, when I made my first decision to go into the career, the only thing I was thinking about was I wanted a job career where I could make money in the area that I was working in. However, when I decided to make a different change, I think my thought process was a little bit different because I was going back to school to I was saying, I wanted to work in healthcare, go get my MBA with a concentration in medical healthcare administration. That's where my journey started. I ended up going back to college thinking that's what my journey was going to be. But I said, you know what, let me take some, a few business classes and see, just get the basic knowledge of, of accounting, finance, whatever. When I took those classes, I thought a MBA, medical healthcare administration was where I was going. But then when I got to talking to my professors, he was telling me, all the opportunities that was there in accounting. And when, he, when I say opportunities, I'm talking about financial opportunities. When I looked at my career, he, he made me, he convinced me to look at my path with my MBA slash medical healthcare administration versus a, an accounting career. Even though I'm still thinking about getting an MBA, maybe not with the medical healthcare administration on it. But when I looked at my potential goals for finance, accounting world, 
was totally different opportunities as far as my potential that I could gain as far as salary. And so that was one reason that I decided not to go with medical healthcare administration role slash MBA. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get accounting because number one, I have more opportunities of all the places I could go, not only financially, but like if I'm more passionate about an industry or role, I have more opportunities. So Yes, the salary pl play a big role. Yes, but you got to keep in mind when you first graduate from college, and I experienced this when I graduated from accounting and finance, when I got my first paycheck from my accounting world, I was like, oh my gosh, I was making so much more money in nursing. Why did I do this to myself? But that's like, hold up, Amy, you got to think, you remember when you did your research? You, you researched and you saw that your potential of where you could go in life financially was way more exciting for me by going, choosing the route of accounting. So yes, a salary does play a role, but make sure you're thinking about long-term goals when you're, when you're picking a career and make sure you pick something that not only you're interested in, that, that actually it complements your current skill sets and things that you maybe want to grow in. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm still on my journey, so who who knows what, what where I'm going in life, and, and you can be the same way. Yeah, thank you so much, Amy, for answering my question. Our next question is from Kellen. My question I want to know from you guys is, looking back on your career changes, what advice would you give to someone who's considering switching industries or roles? Hello, I'll, I'll try to take that one. So I kind of hinted at this a little bit earlier, but I would say the most important thing that you can do is ask questions. You know, after my first year with the audit practice, I realized though I did enjoy the work, some of it, and I love the people I worked with, um, I wasn't feeling fulfilled in the role and that was very important to me. And I didn't know if that was gonna be a temporary failing. So I did some research and I would set 15 minute coffee chats with people above my level to kind of get a better understanding of what their day-to-day life was like. So these are like the senior managers, the partners and the, and the principals. And I would ask them to tell me more about their journey. And, and these weren't just people in the audit practice either, but I would reach out to like human resources, advisory, and even talent acquisition, which is where I'm at now, because those were the areas that I was interested in. So I wanted to tap people that were already there to be like, explain to me what you do on a regular basis. Like what interests you about this? Why are you still around? And that obviously really, you know, helped me. And I also mentioned to you guys earlier that it's important to continuously ask yourself, you know, what kind of person do you want to be? And I kept asking myself that question. And the more I realized that I really didn't want to be an auditor. So there was another moment in my life where I realized, you know, this ain't it. And I had trained for, you know, seven plus years to be an accountant. And now I'm doing something that's completely different. And some people would think, you know, like, wow, what a waste of time or energy or resources. But like to Nick's point, you know, I would say not really. The skills that I gained from training to be an auditor will be with me no matter where I go, like no matter what other position that I enter either. So in my current role, I am the one of the very few that has a background in accounting and those skill sets have definitely come in handy, especially as we start developing like our return on investment strategies. And I don't think of it as a lost time or resources, but I think of it like I'm adding more tools into my toolbox. Um, and that's also something that Nick kind of like hinted on um, earlier too. So my, my biggest advice to you is if you're feeling undecided, if you feel like this is not where you want to be, think about where do you want to go and then find someone who's already there and ask them questions. You know, they're luckily we KPMG, we're very much an open door policy. So it's not weird, you know, for a, a staff, like a first year staff to go tap a, a partner and say, Hey, I want to spend 15 minutes, you know, chatting with you. Cause usually people like to talk about themselves, you know? So it's like a great opportunity for you to learn more and like get exposure and things like that. So my biggest advice, again, would just be ask questions. Uh, don't be scared to ask questions and, you know, really think about what you want to what, what you want to do with your life, essentially. So hopefully that answers it. And also, I'll, I'll piggyback off of that as well. I agree with everything Malat said, because what she said is actually how what I did to help me switch from one industry to another industry. And another thing I would say, if I could do, if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have switched earlier than I did. I feel like early on in my career in nursing, I knew I wanted to make the change, but I be honest, I dragged my feet a little bit in saying like, what are people like my parents? It was like, you know, you want to go back to college. I knew I was kind of concerned about what some people might would say 
me switching goals. And it was like, well, you've been in nursing this long. Why would you decide to change now? So I was kind of, I wouldn't, wouldn't say I was fearful to return to college, but I was kind of fearful of what, what if I change my career and it doesn't go how I'm planning it to go. And now I'm leaving behind nursing and I'm taking on something else. And then what if I get to that and find out that I don't like it? But then on the other hand, I was like, well, what if I don't do it? I'll never know. So I'd rather take the chance, take the chance on myself, believe in myself. And that's what I did. Everybody thought I was crazy when I went back to school after 15 years out of being out of college. Even my advisor told me not to take some of the classes I did when I signed up because he was like, you've been out of school so long, you shouldn't be doing this. And I was like, I come to school and they don't even believe in me. So I had to coach myself. It's like, when you're deciding to switch and do something else, believe in yourself, go surround yourself with people that can support you, encourage you, and don't, don't waste time in saying, what if someone else? Think about what's, number one, if you put yourself first and what you want to do, regardless of what others around you might be saying, go for it. Don't, don't do, don't look back. Just go for it. Even now, I think I made the best decision. I wish I showed, I just wish I would have made this decision a little bit earlier. That's great to hear from you. I feel like sometimes I find myself thinking the same thing about all the choices I've made in my few years of life, how I would have liked to make some rather than others. And those some I have already made, I'd like to have made those same choices much earlier. So I do hear what you're saying right there. And I'm so glad that I heard responses from both of you. Thank you. These are some awesome answers that we've heard from our panelists. And thank you to all, all of our students for your thoughtful questions today. I am inspired by the action you are taking to plan for your futures. You truly are tomorrow's leaders. So before we wrap up, I'd like to pose one last question to our panelists. Junior Achievement recently launched a new awareness campaign, Be a Game Changer, which highlights JA volunteers as game changers in the lives of young people. Each one of us has no doubt had a specific person or moment in our lives or careers that was our game changer. Would you share yours? Um, I would say all my game changer moments have always been uh, when my why is not strong enough to continue doing what I'm doing, you're probably thinking, what does that even mean? Um, well, the why is essentially the reason that you do the things that you do. So the reason you get out of bed, the reason you chose to, to listen to this panel discussion, I mean, think about the opportunity costs here, like you could legit be doing anything else, but you chose to be doing this right now. So at this point in your life, you know, it might be, your why might not be clearly defined. It might be that you're in high school because it's the law or your parents make you, but soon no one's gonna be able to tell you what to do, you know? No one's gonna tell you what classes to take, what major to pursue, whether you should go to class or even whether you should complete your homework. So you'll have to figure all of that stuff out on your own and you have to figure out what that why factor is. And that why is gonna be different for everyone. And it's also very much subject to, to change as you kind of grow and change as well. For me, like my why is a deep sense of responsibility to always try to do the right thing. Uh, and now I work to build strategies to help attract underrepresented talent, you know, people that look like me to the firm. And for now, I'd say that's enough for me to wake up every day and do the work that I do with a company that I love, even on the hardest days. Um, just something to keep in mind, you know, as you guys start thinking about the next chapter in your life, like, what is your why? Why do you do it? And that kind of will push you along, you know, when you're in the hardest, you know, time in your life. Uh, I can go next. So I I, I thought about a couple different times in my life that I probably had a game changer, but I think one uh, point to, to just highlight is I was about two or three years into working at KPMG and I had been kind of working a lot with this one team. Um, it was a big project. It was something I was kind of becoming really familiar with. I really had a lot of good friends on the engagement team that we were working with together. And um, there, it was a new opportunity that came along and we had won this big project with a really kind of flashy client client that I had been kind of um, very interested in in the past. And so they asked for, for new people to kind of raise their hand to, to join this team. And I really thought a lot about it. And I was a little bit nervous to kind of get out of my comfort zone and get out of uh, maybe spending a lot of time with the people that I'd been spending the last couple of years with and kind of been in the trenches with and really um, gotten to know a lot over the past couple of years. But I, I kind of decided I, it was an opportunity that I wanted to raise my hand for. And so I did. And very thankful to, to like the partner that I was working for that, you know, let me go do this other opportunity. And so it was like the first time in my career where I was really like, oh, wow, I'm just kind of doing something totally new. And it's not something that really feels comfortable for me. And it's not something where I feel like, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing every day. And I know exactly, okay, this is how this is going to go. There was kind of a lot of uncertainty, but 
I kind of think that in life, um, you kind of know that you're at the end of a chapter once you feel too comfortable with something. And if you feel too familiar with things, then you're, you're not, that means that you're not really pushing yourself. Like if you feel comfortable all the time, that means that you're not really growing and developing probably the way that you could. And so I think taking opportunities to put yourself in a position where you kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable, you feel a little bit unsure about yourself, that's when you're really going to be able to grow and develop and build new skill sets um, and, and really start to, to kind of branch out in your career, branch out as a person, branch out as a professional, um, meet new people. It was a great opportunity. It was, it was like a project that we served out of a lot of different offices uh, throughout KPMG. So I got to meet people from all over the country um, and it was just a great opportunity. And so I'm really glad that I took that opportunity. Um, it was, would have been easy to just kind of stick with what I knew and stick with something that I, you know, I, I knew I was good enough at to, to kind of be successful at, but I was really glad that I took that opportunity and that kind of encouraged me in the future um, now to say yes to some of those opportunities, especially once I start to kind of feel um, comfortable and, and, and like, like I kind of know what's going on. That's kind of a good sign that you might want to take on a new opportunity or really push yourself um, so you know you're still developing and, and growing as a person. And Nick, I, what you just said, it just resonates with me because my, my, what I want to share is, is the same thing. I, when I was in college, I was tutoring some of the people in, in, my, in school and my professor encouraged me. She's like, you're so good at it. You should, you shouldn't do it for free. You should get paid for it. And I was like, I can get paid to do this. So I, I ended up signing up for like three tutoring companies and started tutoring students which from like fifth grade to, and, and even college students. It was crazy. And as, as I started doing that, I realized how much I enjoyed doing it. But then one day I got a call from one of the tutoring companies and they said, we have a student that's on the autistic spectrum and has ADHD. And they've had a tutor, but they, you know, decided to come with us because they're, they're looking for a tutor that could help the student. So I end up going to Walmart. I got me a, a shark. I found some kind of way found, it was, it was meant to be. I found a shark calculator, I mean a timer. And then I found some, a deck of cards, like spade cards, like cards, and it had sharks on the back of it. So I took it there with me and I said, Hey, we're going to play a game. I was like, I know I'm here to teach you, but I said, I'm not the, like the last tutor. Like, this is going to be fun. I guarantee you. He was having the best time of his life. All in, in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's working. I'm actually doing this. And, and what touched me the most is when I got finished with that session the first time with him. And his mom asked him, he said, she said, so how do you feel? And he said, mom, I like her because she gets me. That is just wonderful to hear. Um, I have my own game changer person. Uh, both my parents have been so integral to my gymnastics career. And I remember in 2016 on the Olympic year, I was ready to quit. I was ready to give up. And my dad pulled me to the side and he was like, hey, <laughs> hey, buddy, you've been doing this for 11 years. And he just kind of gave me the rationale of what was happening. You've been doing this for 11 years. You got a little less than six months left. How about we just hang in there? We just stick with it, see what happens. If in a couple months you don't want to do any more, then we totally understand that. But just kill some time. Just just hang in there. And I listened and I did. Thank goodness I did because the games worked out. So sometimes all you need is one person to stick with you, tell you that they see you, that you can do it and encourage you. And I feel that everyone who's spoken today we got the gist. So thank you for sharing that story. And with that, I want to extend a huge thank you to our panelists for sharing their stories and insights with us today and to our students for contributing to the conversation with their fantastic questions. On behalf of KPMG and Junior Achievement, thanks to everyone for joining us today. Mm -hmm.